Hey, good afternoon, YouTubers. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and this is the Clay Way. So today we are going to set the torques on this head out of a 2008 Subaru Outback. Uh, it's a 2.5 four-cylinder, and Jeff is going to explain to us the torque sequence, and we're going to go ahead and set the torque for you. I thought that would be better to have this somebody explain it to you, and we'll go over a couple things with the engine. Remember, if anybody else can do it, you can do it too. And if you don't mind, subscribe to my page, click the notifications, share my videos. You can reach out to me on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook under Clay's AC and Auto Repair. Okay, our first step is what, Jeff? Okay, first you're going to make sure all your torque bolts or your head bolts are clean and free of anything. Then you're going to grease them up a little bit, put, put some engine oil or assembly lube on threads and on the washers so that you get an accurate torque. You're going to take a, I believe this is a 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter, 12 or 14 millimeter, 12 point. I was point. about to say, I'm pretty sure it's 14. Yeah. Now, that that's a 12 point socket, correct? Yes. Okay. It's 12 point. All right. We're going to start, now it helps if you label your head A, B, C, yep, D, E, and F. This is important because this will help keep track of your torque sequence. Once you get your bolts all down, you don't want to snug them up or anything, just finger tight. Go, and you're going to set, the first set is going to be at 22 foot-pound torque, and you're going to follow the sequence A, B, C, D, E, and F, and go, th go through that torque sequence two or three times until all bolts reach torque. After that, we're going to bring them all up to 51 foot-pound of torque, and once again, do it three or four passes until all the bolts are at torque. Then you're going to go back and you're going to loosen them 180 degrees. Go back a second time and go another 180 degrees. And after that, we're going to go and we're going to tighten them back down. These ones are going to be a little bit tighter, and I'll give you those torque specs here in just a few minutes. Now that you got your first pass, you're going to go back through a couple times because you'll notice now that one's a little bit looser. Go back through that until every t bolt is at 22 foot pound. And we're going to use the same sequence that we used originally to do this. And you also got to remember that at the tip of your gun, you know, at the tip of your impact wrench, he is using an extension. So that does take a little <coughs> bit of the torque away. Not a ton, it's probably nominal, but it's still taking it away just a little bit anyways. Now you can see all, now we're all at 20, 22 foot pound of torque. Now we're gonna readjust and go to 51 foot pound. And we're not gonna show you that because we basically showed you the steps. So we'll be back here in a couple moments. Now I wanna point out something. While Jeff is doing this, pay particular attention to how his hand is resting on the end of there and how his hand is out here. Now the reason he's putting his hand out there is to keep it from wobbling. He wants to keep that square so he gets an accurate torque reading and makes the accurate torque on the bolts that he's torquing down. He also mentioned that cleaning out the, the head cylinder bolt holes with some air and maybe some brake cleaner or something like that is a very good idea prior to putting this in here because more than likely you're doing head gaskets on a used engine and it's not rebuilt and didn't go through the wash. Now Jeff is just about to the part where he's gonna start loosening up the bolts. Now I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit just for a moment about why we have the engine out. It is possible to do these head gaskets with the engine in. The problem is that with the engine in there, and it's kind of difficult. It, the problem is the bolts don't want to come out. You're fighting with everything. It literally only takes a couple hours to get these engines out. These are, these are like Volkswagen engines. Maybe not quite as simple as a Volkswagen engine, but very, very similar to removal. They're super simple. You got about two hours worth to work 
remove the engine so you can get a good inspection you can clean your engine properly we're we're locking down these heads so we can take the engine and clean it we this is not a brand new engine we're putting in here but the bearings were good we put all new timing components on it and right now jeff is at the step he's going to loosen up the bolts and he'll explain to you what he's doing okay we're gonna do now you really don't <laughs> need a torque wrench to do this part um i'm just using it for time savings wise and you're gonna go through the same torque sequence, but in reverse. So you'll start with F and work your way backwards, loosening each bolt 180 degrees. Now, for those of you young kids that are working on your Subarus, I'm very proud of you for trying this out. <laughs> A circle is 360 degrees. I know it seems stupid, but don't feel like it. You don't know unless you ask. So we're gonna go half a circle turn backwards. Okay, so once you've loosened them up 180 degrees, then you've gotta go loosen them up another 180 degrees. The reason that we're loosening them up, basically you're just loosening the bolts. We're squishing the gasket down to go for the, for the final couple torque sequences. And that's why we torqued them down the first time is to just push that gasket down inside there and then set that gasket where the the Subaru says it should be set now one of the things we wanted to talk about was this is a different torque sequence than we've used on Subarus in the past different years have different torque sequences we believe that the engineers figured out that this torque sequence was actually better so if you're working on like a 2002 this is a pretty good torque sequence and to be honest with you, uh, the, the better the sequence, the better the torque and the longer your head gaskets are going to okay. last. So now we'll start with, is this the final or is there two more steps? Well, there's a couple more steps to go. Um, okay. First, we're going to bring bolts A and B to 25 foot pound. After you get A and B, you'll drop it down to 11 foot pound and do C, D, E, and F in, in sequence to, to uh, 11 foot pound of torque. Then we're gonna go ahead and tighten them 80 degrees, just full torque sequence with 80, and then you're gonna go back and do an additional 80 degrees, and that'll be, and then you'll be all done. So right now we're doing the 25 degrees on the center A and B bolts. 25 foot pound. 25 foot pounds. Sorry, big deal. Big, big difference. difference. <laughs> big difference. Sorry, folks. Both. Hang on. Go ahead. Now once you get them both to 25, there, go back over them a couple times just to make sure. See how that one, you get a little bit more in each, each time you do it. You just want to make sure each one. Then you're going to lower it down to 11 foot pound. And we're going to do the other <coughs> remaining letters. And you're going to go back over them just like he said. Okay, now after you've got them torqued down to 25 and 11, 25 on the center bolts, 11 foot pound on the outer bolts. You're going to go back through and set your torque wrench to 80 degrees. And you just follow the torque sequence. Now the nice thing about our torque wrench is it keeps degrees, but obviously you can just square the your wrench, your torque wrench up with whatever you're doing and move it to 80 degrees, which is about one quarter of a circle. So I know it's less than that, but you, you get can, the idea. You can the Specs for Subaru do say you can go up to 90 degrees, but do not go past 90. Okay, that's interesting. Set of 80, you're gonna go back through and go over them again, another 80 degrees, and this is your, gonna be your final torque sequence. I just wanted to take this moment to say to you guys, hey, I'm super proud of you folks out there in the world, well tearing this stuff apart and doing this stuff at your house, it's not that you need a guy like me to do this for you or a guy like Jeff. It's mostly boils down to we know you don't have the time. Remember, if anybody else can do it, you can do it too. Make sure you clean up your surfaces so your gaskets uh, fit properly and you don't have no leaks. These are notorious for leaking. Yes, and it's kind are. of a pain <laughs> in the butt to get the valve covers off when it's inside the car. It's not impossible. It's, like, it's not that bad for us, but do that so you save yourself some time. God bless you guys. Subscribe, click the notifications. If you want, let my videos play while you're working on your stuff. That helps me out a lot. And remember, 
don't be the next to them. Be the first to you. And if anybody else can do it, you can too. That I promise you.